Hey everybody, it's Scott at Simcoe Spring Service, and if you watched my last video, you'll notice that I ordered uh, some wrong parts. This is the blank that I was supposed to order, and this is the blank that I ordered. It was one inch short. And I was trying to figure out exactly what I would do with these pieces, because they're pretty much useless now, and I don't want to throw them out, because it was a lot of money I spent on these. So I got about 300 of these two that I ordered. And they're supposed to cap the ends and these are supposed to be little trailer blocks and it's frustrating because it's like well you, like if it's 300 parts of these about 150 parts of these and I, I i refuse to throw stuff out i'm going to use it i'm going to purpose it so i was talking to some people online and it dawned on me that maybe i can repurpose these for some common chevy lift blocks now we already sell these and make them so all I have to do is transform this into a block I can actually use. So usually when we make Chevy lift blocks, we usually drill a hole in the bottom, weld a center bolt in it, then we take these, put them on top, like so, and then we add these on top for a cap, and it gives you your crushing force, so when you put your weight of your vehicle on it, it will have to collapse that tube for all your strength and stability. The issue that I have is I do not like this overhang. It's too much. So I thought that what I could do is maybe cut some of these down and use them as little braces in the corners like this to give it more strength and stability. So yeah, you can see here that if I put these braces in the corners here, then you'll have a lot more load force distribution to the ends of the block as you're wrapping your axle when you give it gas. The last thing I want to do is bend these little plates that stick out and then you have other issues like U-bolts coming loose and stuff like that. So if we run these braces in the corners like that, then I might be able to get these to work as lift blocks. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to design this into something that's a usable product. I'll take you along the ride for it so you actually can understand my thought processing and you know what my ideas are. And if I can turn this into a usable block that I think is going to be strong enough, I'm going to do a crush test on it too at the end of the video if you want to stick, stick around for that. And I'll see if this will handle up to... 20 tons of pressure without collapsing I think it will be able to handle that no problem and then it should pass for 10 times load so the springs are rated for 2,000 pounds carrying capacity so if I can get it to handle 20 plus thousand pounds then it'll be up to my specifications to be able to sell it and have it as a usable product so first thing I have to do now that I got these I'm going to cut some plates out to fit in the corners here I had thought about bracing it here, but then you have that gap in there, it looks stupid. I had thought about putting them in the corners like that, but then you also get a gap in there, it looks weird. So if I go straight out from the corner here, I think that'll look really good. Make it look like a little X going through it. All right, so we'll cut four pieces off. And they need to be about exactly one inch.
So whenever we're making a block or designing a block, you always have to have a hole for your spring center bolt to go into. But on the other side, you need to transfer that into an actual pin that sticks out there. And that goes into your axle, holds your alignment in place. So because of that, I've cut a little center bolt. And what we're going to do is we're going to weld that into the bottom plate here. And that'll be good. And we'll stack this on top. Put that plate on top and then we'll weld in our little gussets basically. So in my design here, I've reduced the block size back a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I can get a good weld laid in there and then I don't have to grind any of it back. Because if I grind the weld back, I'm losing strength in my welds. It's really hard to get a block like this lined up because look at all the gap around there. So I actually made a jig for it. So this jig is designed for my standard blocks. And what we do is this is a quarter of an inch plate welded onto here. So that'll give me my recess that I need on the side of the block. And then on the back here, this is my standard depth for my normal blocks. And I'm going to shim it with that piece and then that'll convert it to this block here. So we just stick the block on there, slide it back, click that into place, and now I can put a clamp on there and tack it. And that's it. And after it's tacked, then what I can do is I can pull it off and I can do my complete weld on it. And this allows you to manufacture a block and get it tacked into place in a matter of seconds rather than trying to sit here and do calculations and measurements everywhere. So it's pretty cool. So I just got to weld this pin in place and then we can put the block in here, jig it up, assemble it. Yeah, let's weld it all together. Okay, so if all my calculations are correct, I should be able to jig this up. So because I have a whole bunch of these left over, I was thinking about using them as a little brace back here, like so. And then I can just rest these in the corners like that. And I should be able to just tack them into position and weld them in. So I'm not a huge fan that some of these got twisted. I didn't really have a good way to clamp them. If you guys have an idea of how I can clamp these better, let me know. But the beauty of being a welder is I can fill in all of those gaps and make it look pretty, so. So I set up my vise over there, clamp it in, and I'll do some welds. Considering how bad it looked a few minutes ago, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to keep doing all the rest of the welds. I'll take a little peek in here before I weld it. 
Looks kind of trash. Let's see if I can make it look good. So there you go, it's all welded together. Uh, this is the original block that we took out of the Chevy pickup trucks. It's exactly one and a quarter inch tall. And then this one here would be two and a quarter inch tall. So if you took this block out and put these in, it would lift the truck one inch. So it's kind of nice to complement, let's say a leveling kit. However, if you did want to double block them, not a huge fan of it, but you can do it. And uh, this will give you two inches of lift off your stock blocks and yeah, kind of cool. We sell quite a few of these already. It's just another way of doing it with the uh, massive amount of mistakenly purchased components. So yeah, tell me what you think. Is this a good design? Is it a good fit? I think it looks pretty cool. It's all nicely reinforced and gusseted. Should be strong. We'll do a crush test on it here in a few minutes just to see how strong it is. But uh, yeah, not bad for a design on parts and components that would normally get thrown out. If you guys have any good ideas on how I can get this cleaned inside of here and prep for painting, I'd really appreciate it. Any kind of like little Dremels or whatever, let me know. So this is my Precision Power Tools 50 ton hydraulic press. It's air over hydraulic. And the reason why I want to use this one is it actually has a gauge and will give you a readout for how much pressure you're putting into it. So if you look here on the chart, you're looking for 20 tons, which is 4,472 PSI. So if you look on my gauge here, we're looking for right about there, right where the water line hits the readout, right in the corner there. I think it's off a little bit because right now there's no pressure on it and it's reading like a thousand so you know it's not scientific <laughs> so we'll probably be shooting somewhere between 4,500 and 5,500 and that should give me a pretty accurate reading close enough for this test so spring steel is ridiculously strong so I just drilled a hole in it so my center bolt can go in there and then I'll just put a plate on here, and so these are all pieces of spring steel. So I'll be able to handle whatever I put in under for pressure. And there we go. So we're just looking to see if the block squishes, moves, twists, or anything like that. That climbed fast. So there we are, that, that went really quick. <laughs> so we're at 5,500 PSI. And there's like, not a single crumb has even fallen off of this thing. We'll load her up a little bit more, see how far she'll go.
All right, I'm starting to see some cracking. So we're like right up there, like 10,000 PSI. And 10,000 PSI is like 45 tons right there. So right now we're at 45 tons and I just saw right there, a little bit of deformation starting at 45 tons. So unfortunately this press is maxed out. So I'm gonna go over to my 100 ton press and I'm gonna go and give her a little squeeze there. That was cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that to uh, work as I didn't think it was awesome. gonna get that high. Yeah, I've never had it that high. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so after the 50 ton press, I see a tiny little bit of uh, flaking of the, like the forge scale that's on there. There's tiny little bits in the corner, stuff like that. There's a tiny little bit there. Not a whole lot. So I got the same setup. Piece of spring steel, another piece of spring steel, my hole for my block to go into, and we'll give her a squish with the 100 ton. Wow. <laughs> so you can hear the hydraulics. So you can hear the hydraulics overloading there. You can see it started flaking the rust off in the corners. A little bit of the forge scale coming off. But that is a strong block. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't sell this one. <laughs> but... That is, that is impressively strong. All right, so there you go. There's my block. No cracking, no welds broke, no delamination. Just a little bit of forge scale come off. And if I look at it, I can actually see a tiny little dip right there from where the press was pushing into it. But I mean, for a hundred tons, that's uh, it's impressive. Anyhow. Couple thoughts. Uh, we need to know if anybody would be interested in a block like this. I mean, obviously it's super duper strong. That was a hundred tons and it resisted it. So basically, uh, let me know if you're interested in a two and a quarter inch block. Uh, it would come with a set of U-bolts, obviously. That would be two inches longer. So it could accommodate a set of blocks like this. They come two in a pack. Let me know if you're interested. If it, you are, uh, let me know and I will put it as a product on my website. Um, so I'd probably sell the first five to eight kits just painted. And if they sell well, then I would consider powder coating them and making them look really cool. A uh, couple other thoughts I had was uh, because of the X pattern and because of how extremely stupid it was for me to order the wrong stuff, I was thinking about calling it the extreme block. Extreme block. So let me know down, this, down in the comments down below if this is something you'd be interested in. Uh, second of all, if you guys know of any other kind of bits or anything, I could do some better cleanup on the inside here. And I believe also I would be looking for some sort of uh, anti-spatter because uh, we're having a little bit of spatter going on here too. And I'd want to make them look as nice and clean as possible. So yeah, let me know down in the comments down below. All right, take care. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you next time. All right, bye.